Okay, so I was asked if I could make a short video just showing you the Woody Valley Libero harness. Um, so this is the harness here. You can see uh, it's uh, nicely made. They've put a couple of uh, color flashes uh, down the sides. So whatever color you choose for your harness. Comes with a decent sort of uh, carry bag. It's got no um, waist strap on it, but you generally don't go far with a, a hang glider uh or hang glider harness on your back so this is fine uh there's a little window on top of the bag for putting your uh, id into it and uh this is a size large uh harness and uh bag as well obviously um so the bag has a good quality zip on it um it also has a front pocket where you can store you can't actually get much much in there you can get a uh uh you know a rashy or speed sleeves or something in there together with uh, maybe some gloves and then it's full um, so that's all the storage on the bag so the uh, bag seems to be made of a semi sort of uh, waterproof material I wouldn't expect it to uh, completely keep the water out but I would think in a light shower it's not going to absorb the moisture for a few minutes so the harness uh, folds up on itself like this and it fits beautifully in the bag. The harness has uh, really nice fittings uh, like this, uh, quick release fittings. They're super uh, lightweight and thin. Um, so that's great. Um, let's see, and I'll pull the harness out and show you some more. So because there's no uh, back plate in it, the harness uh, folds up really small. Um, and it folds up nicely in half like this. So you can just unfold it like that. Um, it has uh, leg loops, uh, again, the same uh, super lightweight connectors as on the front. Um, the leg loops are well padded and they're comfortable. I mean, it's pretty much a Woody Valley <laughs> harness and they've been doing this for years. So you would expect them to uh, get it right. It's got a couple of uh, support bars down the back here, aluminium bars. They're quite lightweight and they could be removed if you wanted to remove them. Um, and there are a couple here as well. And that is basically what uh, hangs, uh, holds your weight and gives the harness its structure. So uh, I'm 178 centimeters. This is a 5L uh, size. And it pretty much fits me uh very well indeed the way that they do the adjustment on this uh you have to give them pretty uh, accurate me measurements for a lot of different things and then they give you a harness that is slightly too big um, and then you adjust the size by putting these uh plates in here so there are uh very lightweight foam cutouts that sit inside the boot and it comes with a heap of them and you just uh, remove them until it's the right size for you or add them until it's the right size for you, depending on which way you want to look at it. So the harness has uh, bungees fitted, so the cords will retract after you uh, let go of the zip. It's got this really beautiful plush velvet material inside. Uh, it makes me want to fly it in summer without a shirt on just to be hugged by it. It's a really nice material. Um, I've got a Moyes... Um, Kona Metamorphis C, the small uh, version in here, which I think is good for uh, about 100 kilos. And uh, the whole harness with the reserve in it weighs seven kilos in total. So that's with the bag, uh, the harness and the chute and the carabiner. And it comes with a lightweight carabiner. These are made of uh, titanol, I believe. Um, and uh, they're super thin, super strong. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a good way of saving weight. So the standard draw cords with the retract, as I said, the paragliding, uh, sorry, the reserve handle is really easy to uh, get to. It's very, uh, it's just natural motion for you to grab it with your hand. Um, and it's uh, held in with the usual uh, arrangement where basically a little tug won't do anything you've got to put a certain amount of force on it to actually get it to uh, come out um, but that should always be a pre-flight check for you anyway each time before you fly to make sure that the uh, parachute harness is secure 
So the harness has uh, loops for towing from the uh, chest. So that's uh, part of my uh, aero tow bridle. You can see it goes onto the chest point there. It also has loops lower down. So if you're car towing, you may want to use those. I mean, I tend to just use the ones on the chest because uh, I like to be uh, head down in prone even when I'm car towing. Uh, but some people prefer to stay upright and then it's uh, nicer if you're on a, a lower point. Um, let's see, the harness is completely skinned, so the inside harness that you can see is one layer and then the outside layer is actually a skin which can be removed, so if, uh, if you wear out your harness it's all velcroed on, so you can order a new skin, so if you wanted different colours I guess for different days of the week or just if you're harsh on your gear, you can just order a skin and replace just the skin. Um, which is a, a good thing. Um, it's got the usual little wear patch on the boot, so that will be the uh, first thing to uh, wear out as you run around because it's always just part of the boot that drags and then you can reorder these or replace and fix it yourself. Uh, storage wise, uh, internally the harness has a full length, uh, nearly full length zip that runs down inside it. So that's where I would normally put my glider bag. It folds up and it goes in there nicely. Um, you know, obviously if you're doing a lot of XC and you're doing that regularly, you're going to be using a lightweight cross-country bag and that makes all the difference in terms of weight and the space it use, but uses, but you could fit a full-size one in there. It has a camelback pouch here if that's where you like to put your uh, camelback. Personally, I've just had them <laughs> leak down my neck too many times and I'd rather have it somewhere where the uh, water is... Uh, below me, um, but that's just a personal thing. Um, and uh, storage wise, there are also uh, pockets on the outside. So there's big pocket, uh, a big pocket here. So down the uh, back end of the harness. Um, and then there are also more pockets here. The pockets have all got uh, uh, elastic uh, tie down restraining straps whatever you want to call them in them so if you put cameras or radios or things in there you can attach them to the harness so they can't fall out there's also a zipper uh, here where you know you see I've got my uh, aero tow bridle and gloves and some other stuff actually in the harness at the moment um, so that's handy um, you can of course get to these in flight but you've got to be aware that uh, if you're in prone, likely the pockets will be facing down or forwards. And so having things attached is a great idea. And you also get very good at, um, you know, putting the right things in the right pockets and being very careful when you go for them so that you don't drop anything. But between the storage space in the back and the uh, pocket on the back, um, pockets, there's another one on this side. Um, the harness does have... Uh, ample storage space uh, I've found for, for my gear anyway. If you really had a lot of gear you might uh, struggle but that'll be the same for any kind of uh, um, lighter weight harness because you're always compromising on something and um, so the the straps have uh, you know the usual touches like uh, velcro so that you can fix the end of it so you know where it is and the bungee will retract the other one Internally in the harness, uh, it's all the same lightweight anodized uh, aluminium buckles everywhere and really nice finish and you know I'd be surprised if that wasn't a YKK zip, uh, guess it is, uh, XXL, whatever XXL is, um, but it's, it's a big solid zip and everything here is velcroed in so the zip is also uh, fixed in place with velcro. So if you had a zip problem um, in flight, first of all, you can just kick your way out, which is a great safety feature. You don't have to belly land. You can kick your legs out. You can always get out, even if the zip jams. And secondly, when the zip invariably uh, breaks a tooth or dies uh, after use, you can just uh, Velcro this one out, just rip, rip it out and put a new one in, which you can order from Woody Valley. So. From a, a replaceability point of view, this harness is fantastic. Um, 
and um, yeah that, that's a really nice design feature I think um, you could argue I suppose on the other hand that it's also lightweight and lighter materials and so it's more likely to need replacing but swings and roundabouts um, so so anyway that's the uh, libero harness um, when you're flying it you um, it has quite a simple system here it's quite a clean system of lines um, the two main straps that hold your weight and then there are lightweight uh, lines that basically um, support your legs and uh, your upper body and then there's a good old-fashioned uh, uh, cleat here um, which you know I know it's more elegant to uh, push up with your bum or out with your shoulder or something like that uh, but these are 100% <laughs> reliable they don't jam they don't break um, it's yeah it's always going to work unless the more complex and more hidden systems um, I've found so I, I'm a big fan of these um, and it's just getting used to remembering you know you pull forwards to unlock it you pull back to uh, to lock it um, and then that's easy so um, yeah so uh, flying the harness uh, you can see videos of me flying it um, really uh, really easy to get into and get out of because there's no back plate and you when you glide is on the ground you can just put it on like a jacket uh, and clip in you're not you know um, contorting yourself because the back plate won't let you get down near the ground or bend or whatever same thing when you're waiting on launch um, to take off you can just drop the glider back onto the keel and then you can sit back like you're in a recliner chair with this harness and because the back can curve it's uh, it's got it's not a solid plate it's actually very comfortable to sit in unlike uh, the comp harnesses I've had in the past uh, and one I've still got where it's really uncomfortable to sit on launch like you you're in a very um, difficult and uh, yeah, painful position because of the back plate and the lack of flexibility of the harness. Um, what else? Uh, zip's really easy to do up um, and undo, as you would expect. Uh, it's super easy to get head up and head down. Um, this, you know, it's very well balanced for me here. Uh, super easy to get in and out of prone. Uh, essentially, when you put your feet back there, uh, you naturally drop down the center of gravity is just right um, as soon as you take your feet out you pop up again um, so you don't have to zip up the harness to fly prone which is I've got another harness here if it's not zipped up I can't stay uh, comfortably in prone and so you know when you take off from a low site and you're scratching and you're thinking you might bomb out any minute and you're only ever 30 seconds away from the ground the last thing you want is to have your harness zipped up and then have the ongoing fear of what happens if the zip jams today I've got no time to make a plan B or do anything so being able to fly just take off put your feet in the harness and fly as comfortably and with as much control as you can uh, when the harness is zipped up is I think it's a key selling feature so yeah it's a really beautifully designed harness uh, I love this very much um, I've, uh, I've had a lot of harnesses I've been flying since I was a teenager uh, I'm nearly 50 now, so I've been doing it for a while. Uh, the last harnesses I've had, um, I've got a Rowan Holt Camp, Holt Camp uh, RR harness here, um, which I won't talk about because that's not uh, what this review is about. Um, before that, I had an Eros, uh, what was it? I uh, can't remember the name of it now. But the Eros harness, which uh, has the skin, it's a racing harness, uh, XC harness, uh, the skin made of uh, glider cell material, um, the crosshatch stuff. Uh, and that was a great harness, um, but uh, I bought it second hand and it was always a little bit small for me. And uh, because of uh, various back issues, uh, I was unable to fly with it anymore because for me it's important I have a very comfortable harness if I'm having to push out with my feet the whole time um, or push against something the whole time that very rapidly does my back in so before that I had an Eros Myth harness which was custom made for me I bought that new that was a very nice harness uh, and uh, yeah it, it was a good harness um, before that I had a Woody Valley um, it was the very first uh, harness that they made with a uh, 
think it's a fiberglass rather than a carbon fiber backplate but um so i still have that as well i still enjoy flying with that harness um the main reason i retired it is because uh it's getting very old and uh you know i probably think harnesses should be replaced every say five to ten years if you wanted to pick a number and that that's happened to me a few times now since i've been flying um before that i was flying mostly with a pod light harness uh in the early days and um i've still got that harness i still fly with it on the coast it's over 30 years old and uh, you can poke your finger through the external fabric and it's completely uv'd out so it's it's definitely uh, well used and well loved uh, and I wouldn't fly in it if I was any further away from the ground than I'm prepared to fall. Um, so I really only use it at very, very low coastal sites and uh, I don't have a reserve in it because I'm pretty sure the opening shock would uh, cause the harness to explode. So one day for my own good, I'm gonna throw that harness away or set fire to it or cut it up into small pieces or something, but I just can't bring myself to do it because there's so much uh, flying and memories and love and everything uh, attached to that harness um so um that was an awesome harness i loved it the woody uh, the aerosmith uh, 2 was a great harness and i loved that one too um the viper the aeros viper that was a great harness too that i loved um the Ro rr harness i haven't really got on with but I, yeah i think it's primarily because it doesn't fit me very well which is a, a shame um but that's you know that was just a situation i ordered a harness um and then uh my back went and i couldn't fly for nearly a year and so the harness arrived but i didn't have a chance to test it and then by the time i started flying it and realized it was uh improperly sized i didn't feel it was uh, fair for me to go back to the manufacturer and complain about it um and I measured myself for it as well. So uh, I'm, you know, maybe it's Mia Culper and uh, it, it was my fault. So, um, all right, that uh, is this uh, review. Uh, there are things here and I have no idea what these are. Should, uh, oh, this is, okay. That's the other feature this harness has is um, it's got a drogue shoot pocket. So this would be uh, where you attach the uh, drogue chute. Um, so I guess this pocket here, this little one here, is for a drogue chute, and that's for the drogue chute bridle to attach to. Um, I know if you're in Europe and you're landing in very small paces, places and you're in a high performance glider, drogue chutes are pretty critical, otherwise you're running the risk of overshooting. If you've got a big enough field to land in, drogue chutes just add an extra level of complexity and danger, so I'm not a big fan of them. And if you're flying an intermediate or low performance glider, you'd be much better off to work on your landing skills and hitting an aim point rather than putting in a drogue chute, because if you're not good enough to spot land on a spot every single time, I don't think that you're gonna be <laughs> safe with a drogue chute, no offense, um, but they are difficult things uh, to use and it is uh, unforgiving and you can't take it back once you've thrown it and if it wraps itself around the rear wires or deploys asymmetrically or starts spinning or you let it go over the base bar or there's all kinds of reasons why it can let you down um, and uh, they're, they're not necessary on any glider where you can just pull the bar in and speed up and um, increase your uh, drag that way and even on a high performance glider I would say on a topless or something if you go into a hang at a couple of hundred feet and pull the bar into your knees, you will shoot down to the ground, but because you're creating so much drag with your body, you will actually waste a huge amount of energy doing that. So you can burn height that way. And it's much safer because if you realize you're overcooking it or you suddenly get a change of air, you can just put your legs back in the harness and clean up again. Um, and of course, when you're increasing your sink rate and burning energy by, um, flying fast, you can always stop doing it by just letting the bar out and going back to uh, a slower speed where your, um, you know, your sink rate is lower and you're flying more efficiently. Anyway, uh, it wasn't supposed to be about that. So that's about the harness. So I uh, hope that was helpful to someone and uh, fly safe.